few months, the politicians have all agreed on one thing, that no matter who won the election, massive spending cuts were inevitable. On Monday, we'll get some idea where the axe will fall. The Chancellor will announce £6 billion of cuts, and this region is bound to feel some of the pain. This report from our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair. This was the week when the sun finally shone and new MPs got settled in. But at Westminster, dark clouds are gathering. Everyone knows that on Monday, it gets serious. How painful do you think this will be? Well, I don't think it will be easy, but I think that there's been a lot of money badly spent and we can get to grips with that. The new MP for West Suffolk used to be Chief of Staff to George Osborne. He expects a lot of the spending projects announced in the last few months of the Labour government to be in the firing line. If that's the case, expect the plans to rebuild schools in our region to be scrapped and many road improvement schemes in the east will once again be on hold. My worry is we'll see people laid off and the economy go down because those people won't be able to have the spending power and really at a fragile time like this, that's a huge risk to take. Regional ministers have gone and there's now a question mark over the regional government office and the planned regional fire service. So what about the regional development agency, EDA, which oversees business development in the east? Many MPs believe money could be saved if it too were axed. I think lots of quangos can go. I'm sure they do fulfil a role of sort. But could not those roles be uh, carried out by the democratic process? The government says EDA will be spared only if it can prove it gives value for money. We really are worth the money, and you only have to talk to businesses in the region to find that out. We get a return on investment for the Chancellor of the Exchequer. For instance, every pound we invest in the east of England actually brings a return of five pounds. This is the climate we're now entering. Every penny of public spending justified and tough decisions about what we really can afford. Andrew Sinclair, BBC Look East. And the Politics Show will have more on the forthcoming spending cuts this Sunday at midday here on BBC One. And our political editor has written about these changing times on her blog. That's at bbc.co.uk forward slash blogs forward slash Deborah McGurran. Now for the first time in 18 years, three British women tennis players will be competing at the French Open, which starts this weekend. One of them is Elena Baltacha from Suffolk. She's the British number one and ranked 63rd in the world. Our reporter James Burridge has been given exclusive access ahead of her biggest month of the year. For too long, she'd been travelling the globe alone, struggling to qualify for the majors and was in danger of becoming forgotten. But what a difference a few years make for Elena Baltacha. The last probably nine to ten years, I've kind of been banging my head against the brick wall, really, um, trying to get myself at least into the top 100 and I wasn't able to do that. And ever since I met Nino, uh, my coach Nino Severino, um, it's just he just completely transformed my tennis and it's just so exciting because you know I was trying so hard and and I was practically on the kind of on the verge of retirement until I met Nino. She started this year reaching the third round at the Australian Open. Weeks later, she won her first $100,000 tournament in America, but now the pressure comes home to roost. In the past, she's never really stayed on court and compete month after month after month. So you think we left them Boxing Day um, and we've been competing ever since. So mentally it's a different sort of area for Bal. This is sort of another level because she's up there with the big boys now. After an hour and a half training on the clay, Elena heads to the gym. So much of the modern game is dependent on speed and power, but the mental battle is just as key. That's the big thing, is to get yourself in a state of mind where it's, you know, you're, you're very competitive. Um, and I think as well in, in tennis, the higher up you go in the rankings, the more tougher it is. Two, three, good boy. When Four. she's not got an eye on a tennis ball, she has one on the future. Elena's recently set up her own academy, determined to reverse Britain's appalling track record in recognizing tennis playing talent. For now though, her commitments are personal, pressing and Paris. You've got to go out on court and you've got to believe that anything is possible because otherwise there's no point going on. You know, I'm playing good tennis, I feel very confident um, and hopefully with the luck of the draw um, and also with great tennis, you know, you never know. James Burridge, BBC Look East, Ipswich. Well, tonight the summer blockbuster Prince of Persia goes on general release. It stars big Hollywood names like Jake Gyllenhaal and Ben Kingsley.
but it also features a 13-year-old from Norfolk who was picked for the film after showing off his talent for parkour, a type of free running. Here's a trailer. Prince Dastan, have you wondered how you could have found such a treasure? Are you not curious why an orphan from the streets would be chosen to become a prince? The gods have a plan for you, a destiny. There are those who refuse the power... Wow. Well, That's great. it does look great, isn't it? Will Foster <laughs> is here with us in the studio. Will, you're 13 now. You were actually 11 at the time of the filming, weren't yeah. you? How did you get that part? Because you're playing the part of the Prince of Persia when he was a, a boy. Yeah. Well, because I do parkour, one of my friends who I do parkour has sent me a link on the internet, and it was pretty much Disney casting for a young boy who was 11 years old with dark hair and blue eyes who practices parkour to play the part. And so I just emailed them with my video. And, uh, and a couple of weeks later, uh, they, sent, they sent us an email saying that they wanted us to meet them in Ealing Studios for an audition. And so I went and met them and just got apart. That's brilliant. I mean, <laughs> you must be the talk of your school. All your mates must be so jealous. <laughs> I don't know about jealous, but, yeah, a lot of people ask me about it. Tell us a bit about how you got involved in parkour, because that's that, it's free running, isn't it? And it, I mean, it, it looks very dangerous, but if you do it properly and you, and you know what you're doing, it's, it's quite safe. Yeah, I actually started when my maths teacher, we had a substitute teacher who came into school, and instead of teaching us maths, he showed us, because it was like the last day, he showed us a DVD about parkour. Wait a second, this is your maths teacher telling you this, <laughs> hang on. Better than maths, This, this isn't never it, happened really? when I was at school. <laughs> you know, what kind of teacher is this? It's, your well, mother it, must it be petrified every time you leave the house. It's kind of a film part. <laughs> well, so okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> so you you still do parkour, obviously. Yeah. So you got the part. You you went to Morocco for filming. Yep. And and how long were you out there? We were in Morocco for about two weeks, doing most of the acting and some of the most of the like jumping about, most of the parkour. And then we went to London for a week to do some of that as well. And did you have to do speaking role as well, or was it mainly the physical side the, of it? It was mainly physical, but there was actually a lot of speaking. Uh, some of it got taken out, some of it's still in there because it was too long. What was it like hanging out with Jake Gyllenhaal? We saw you in that clip there, he's talking to you. What's he saying? If you pump iron, you'll be like me, you'll be as big as me. <laughs> was he all right, a nice guy? Yeah, he's really nice. He was really nice in person. Fantastic. Well, it looks great. Real, and, well done. And are you going to go on stay in films, do you think? I hope so. I haven't done anything since Prince of Persia, but if something popped up, I'd really love to do it. Well, we, we think you've done a great job Absolutely. so far. Absolutely, and, and I'm glad you, you're sitting down. Don't leap around the studio because we're not insured. <laughs> right. Well done, Will. We'll watch your career, career from now on. Thank you very much, Will. <laughs> you're not going to leap around, are you, Chris? You're going to do the weather standing up. No, and it Good certainly night. feels like summer blockbuster weather out there as well. So we've got lots of sunshine across the region, and we had some beautiful pictures across Bedford uh, this afternoon showing that sunshine. And uh, what you saw today, actually, with that, is going to stay with us through much of this weekend. So uh, lovely sunshine, warm temperatures coming up for tomorrow. Uh, good weather for, uh, for a barbecue. Looking at the temperatures that we made it to today, 23 Celsius at Marham was the top temperature across the region.